Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Aqueduct Talking Horses, this Sunday edition of the program, November 24th. I'm the big A, Anthony Stabile, filling in for Andy Sterling, who has the day off. Andy will be back with me on Wednesday as we get you ready for the Thanksgiving holiday. Lots of action, lots of action here next week at the Big A. David Aragona will join me today as we go through this nine-race card. Unfortunately, the forecasted rain came last night right around 7 o'clock. I was smashing some dominoes when the rain started to fall, and... The rain fell and kept falling. It's still falling when I walked in here about an hour ago, and we were off the turf and sloppy today, but that's not going to dampen the mood here in the cozy confines of the Big A studios. We have a nine-race card for you. We have a gigantic Empire Six carryover, uh, $102 short of $380,000 that'll kick off in race number four. And of course, if you want to play along with us, you got to get over to Naira Betts. Use my promo code. It's big A. It's not really mine. Uh, the building's here a little longer than me. 100% deposit match up to 200 bucks. You can go to the website to find out more about that. But remember, you have to use the promo code big A to take advantage of that 100% deposit match. It's Sunday. That means one thing. Well, first to carry over. Justin trying to keep me on my toes today. Like, not like I have enough going on. Uh, there's that carryover, 102 bucks shy of 380 large. Mandatory payouts less than two weeks away. Cigar mile day. 20 cent bet, 20 percent takeout. But remember, to scoop that entire pool, you have to have a unique ticket. We'll, only one ticket, and we will distribute that pool uh, if whether or not anybody hits it or not. The mandatory payout day is Saturday, December 7th. Cigar mile day. Out where the turf meets the surf at Del Mar, it's $25 risk-free Sundays. Bet 25 to win on any horse in the second race at Del Mar today. And if you get beat, guess what? Our bet's going to give you 25 bucks back. You must play it through the app. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Rudy Rodriguez, because you messed that up last week. And I was telling you about all the action. Thanksgiving weekend racing spectacular. Andy would be very happy that it's considered a spectacular. It kicks off on Thanksgiving Day. Gates open at 11 a.m. 11 stakes races worth 1.9 million. If you want to have your Thanksgiving lunch up at the Equestris, 888-516-NYRA. That is the number to call. And without further ado, we have about 25 minutes to get through this nine race card. How are you, David? Doing great. Always love Thanksgiving week, one of my favorite times of the year. And uh, the racing's great, so looking forward to getting to the races. The, uh, you and I yesterday, within about uh, 30 seconds, tweeted very quickly. I know we got to get to the card. Yeah. Sadler's joy. I mean, what else can you say at this point, right? I love that horse. I couldn't pick him because he was like, what, seven to five? Yeah. But no, it's great to see him win. It doesn't happen that often, but he always shows up. And like I said on Twitter, anytime we can have a year where annals of time, bricks and mortar, and Sadler's Joy all win major stakes yeah. on the circuit. It's, uh, I'll be smiling from ear to ear. So let's get into the card again, sloppy and off the turf here. Early pick five starts in the first. Starter allowance, $50,000 starter allowance here. Field of six. You and I look at this one completely differently here. Yeah. Um I mean, I guess Queen Cahen is the horse you have to start with because she's the main speed of this race. And I mean, setting aside the fact that she's got superior speed figures, albeit on the turf coming into this race, we can throw up the time form US pace projector. She's just gonna be out loose on the front end and that might be enough. Although it's worth pointing out, she's gonna get bet primarily off of turf speed figures. And if you look at her dirt races, she's got a slight edge, but it's not as big of an edge as the odds are going to indicate. No, I agree. Uh, my thing was the speed edge, number one, and number two, uh, I, I feel like her two wet track races, the two wins, and I know you don't have to always look at the wins, but she did win on a couple of wet tracks, and uh, I think that's going to help her cause. But more importantly, I mean, if you look at this pace projector, she's just gone on the front end today. She is, and that might be enough to get her home just at a very short price. I'm not thrilled with her dirt form. I know she was facing a tougher field uh, with Miss Imperial and Jen Emily the last time that she was on the dirt, uh, but she wasn't as effective as her turf races that day. I think she's a better turf horse, so we're going to see. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you don't have my top pick in there because I thought she was the other major player in here, Girl of Toscanova. Uh, her comeback race on September 7th, she got a very good trip that day, but she's still around a speed figure that puts her squarely in the mix here. And last time out, I, I should have sent in the replay, she did not get a great trip last time. She was off a little bit slowly, uh, was kind of shuffled back in the early go, 
going. Coming to the top of the stretch, uh, Junior was trying to move up the inside. A horse came over on him. He had to steady. He lost all its momentum. Uh, that really cost her finishing closer that day. She actually ran on well when she got into the clear in the lane. Uh, I think she's better than that last race, and her prior form, I think, makes her very tough here. Uh, I thought she was the other major horse, and I liked her at a better price. Yeah, she's going to be a big price. She's going to be a bigger price than Queen Kyan. That's for sure. We have a stat. Linda Rice has a first off the claim here, Prairie Fire. She took this from Danny Gargan. Here's the stat. Uh, this is first after the claim from Danny Gargan. Andy and I have talked about this ad nauseum. Uh, but here's the actual stat that David put up. I mean, you, you want to stay as far away from these horses as you possibly can, according to this stat, don't you? Linda's great off the claim, and I guess it's a positive sign that she's showing some confidence in moving yeah. this horse up into a protected spot, but it's hard to claim off Danny Gargan. There are some trainers that are just hard to improve off of, and he's one of them. Yeah, and again, those stats are, are obviously just a, a, a one tool you want to use in handicapping. Uh, Linda did take this horse, and like you said, uh, protecting this horse, if you will, mm -hmm. by not dropping this horse back in for the tag, uh, and actually running this horse back in 23 days. So, uh, I, I think it's a good sign that uh, she's not she's not dropping the horse. Uh, I did not have access to that stat, but I would, certainly would make me uh, a little leery, maybe a little five, Gracetown. Yeah, she ran okay last time in a race that might be a little bit better than the speed figure indicates, but she was just picking up pieces that day. She's got to improve. All right, we'll see if Queen Kind can take him gate to wire or if David's queen girl of Toscanova can get the money in race number one. Off the turf in the second, this race will cut back from a mile and a 16 to one mile. One mile out of the chute on the main track in here. Uh, four scratches, leaves us with a field of eight and uh, not a ton of real dirt form uh, to go on in this field. There's not, and for me, I just couldn't get past the Honest Town. I mean, he's just taking that important drop from Maiden Special Weight down to Maiden Claiming Company. I mean, I know it's not as, as drastic of a change against the New York Breds, but I think it's still a positive change in this field because he's just been facing much tougher horses. And do I love his dirt form? Not exactly. His debut was good. His other dirt races are just so-so. But uh, he's been facing better horses. He's run superior speed figures. I just thought he was super logical. In yeah, him. we hosted this show together two starts back the last time he tried the dirt. You liked Cool Boy that day yeah. when he just got in front and kept on going. Uh, yeah, I, I, I went to a horse that has some success on a wet track, and Champagne Chills, his numbers on wet tracks are better than his number on dry tracks. I put him on top. He's not going to be that 15 to 1. Obviously, David made that morning line for the turf. He'll be 4 to 1. I think they'll bet the dropper. I want to use the four horses I have on the screen, honestly, uh, and try and survive the pick five and the pick four. Yeah, my problem with him is that July 26th race is looking a little phony in retrospect. Sure I know it was a wet track. I still feel like that was a weaker field than the figure indicates, but we'll see. He's been a disappointment. He's getting back like, maybe on a surface that he's going to appreciate. I thought Painter's Prize was one you could throw in because his dirt races, well, he's more of a turf horse. His dirt speed figures give him a little bit of a shot, but I thought it was all about the Honest Town. Yeah, okay. Uh, Honest Town for David. Champagne chills. See if he can get back to his wet track glory when he won in Saratoga was disqualified. Uh, we'll see how it shakes out in race two. That starts that early pick four. We just mentioned race number three off the turf. We have just a field of four now coming out of here. But I'll tell you what, we have a pretty good field here. Uh, two of these horses, No Dozing and Noble Indy, are, are stakes winners on the main track. And we have a replay for you. Not one of the stakes winners, but good old backside of the moon. And here he is getting the money. Uh, Rudy Rodriguez claimed this horse earlier this year. And actually, and here he is getting the money back on November 3rd. I don't think there's um, any disputing that if Backside of the Moon repeats this last race, he's going to be pretty tough to beat in here because his main rivals, either either not winning types or they're just not in top form right now. And he is in top form based on this last race for Rudy. Uh, so I think he's going to be tough if he repeats it. You might look at his race two back in the slop and say, oh, well, he's a horse that hates the wet track, so I can't take him here. I, I think that'd be making too much of that one race because he had run well over wet tracks in the past, albeit Harrow tracks. And also, I think more than the wet track two back, it was the trip that did him in because he was sort of in behind horses, taking that sloppy kickback the entire way. He's not going to have to do that here because he's drawn the outside post position. And uh, I just respect the form that he's in and don't want to be too hard on him for that race two back. I mean, you could make a case essentially for anybody in here, I think. Um, uh, maybe Noble Indy's a little hard to yeah. find at this point in his career on the main track. I mean, this horse did win the grade two of Louisiana Derby last year. Um, he's a little hard to find, but I think you can make a case for certainly for Backside of the Moon like you did. Uh, we both have Dynamax Prime in the mix in here. Uh, you worry with a horse like him in the four-horse field that he doesn't get the setup he needs. 
Yeah, I mean, he's in some ways the most reliable horse because he no handles question. a wet track. He's run a series of consistent speed figures. He hasn't won much recently, but that's because he's been running into Mr. Buff in all of those races. But uh, he's going to show up here. He just needs a little pace. Yeah. Uh, I went to no dozing. I'm assuming Noble Indy's going to go to the lead in here like he's been uh, uh, doing for the most part on his, in, recently on the turf. I'm assuming Noble Indy's going to go like you. I'm assuming that Noble Indy's going to be have a very tough time uh, negotiating the main track at this point in his career. I'm hoping no dozing just tucks up behind him and, and gets first run on, uh, uh, on backside of the moon. I mean, I, he once would have been really tough in this race. His recent form is, it's not good. It's not good. I mean, I, I tried to put a positive spin on it. I watched those races. He, he really hasn't run well. He's lost at short prices. I, I couldn't, I mean, we'll see. Um, I hope he gets back into form because I liked him at one point. It's just, he's hard to take off his 2019 form yeah. for me. Truth be told, I wish I could have a real strong opinion in here. I, I have to use the three horses. I have to use No Dozing, Dynamax Prime, and Backside of the Moon. And I feel like a, a, an idiot doing it. May even just hit the all button because my luck, Noble Indy, will get in front and keep <laughs> on going and pay $11 in a four-horse field. And uh, it, it's, it scratches down to four, but it's a really interesting race in yeah, this field of four. they're all good horses. Yeah, they're all good horses, and they could all, on their best day, uh, on their, if they all ran their best race, the four of them would hit, would hit the line together. Uh, and those are, those are the funnest races you possibly could have. Sometimes these sloppy tracks, uh, they... Uh, they result in some, some wild finishes, so we'll see what happens in race number three. Again, just about 380,000 waiting in the Empire Six pool. It starts here in race four. A couple of scratches bring us down to a field of five open 20, and I think that's uh, important. Well, you don't have my horse. You don't have my horse. One, two, three, four. I don't. All right. Have at it with cover photo. Um, well, I, I mean, I think the horse that you really have to discuss here is Free Kitty because she's gonna be the favorite. If she gets back to her best races, she's just gonna trounce this field. I mean, she's just better than these horses, but you have to wonder a little bit. Um, she's dropping precipitously off that long layoff. Uh, this is a barn that had success with her earlier in the year. I mean, they got her to win races and that had been her problem in the past. She looks a lot like Hall Anchor for this barn who dropped the other day and didn't run a step. And I'm just a little bit concerned that she can't run anymore. And if you're getting, gonna get past her and you're picking against her too, I mean, the other options are just kind of hard to, to wrap your head around because there's not a lot to say. Most of them are coming off pretty poor efforts. We have a pace projector here as well. Uh, let's throw up the pace projector. And this has, uh, well, this has Malibu Mischief, uh, especially with Miss Mimi in trouble for Skylar out of here. Uh, it, it has Malibu Mischief on what looks like a pretty easy lead. Yeah, and it's going to be even easier now because she is just way faster than these horses early. And under normal circumstances, you'd say, oh, well, she was against Tougher last time. Maybe Service can resurrect her form second off the claim. But, I mean, let's remember, even for her prior barns, this is a filly who just can't stand up on a wet track. I, I don't like to make too much of that, but if you look at all of her sloppy or muddy sealed track races, she just can't run a step. And that really concerns me. And she's also a filly coming off an eased. Yeah. Uh, you she know, was, I, I yeah. don't love betting those horses when you combine that with the fact that she was, she just does not like a wet track. Uh, she's kind of a, a tough horse to take. All right, so you went to the two cover photo. Let's hear, let's, let's hear this. Ultimately, I decided to put in first and second positions the two horses that I thought were in the best form. Even though they look a little bit inferior, they're in good form right now. I think that's true for Karen's Gem, who ran okay off the claim for Ray Handel and was just in too tough at Parks last time. She's back at the right level. And cover photo is probably going to be the biggest price of all the horses in this race. Yeah. Uh, but... She's handled wet tracks before, hasn't really run better on them, but she at least handles them. And her last race, first off the claim for, uh, for Jimmy Ferraro, was actually pretty good because that was a stronger field than this. Miss Jack, Honey Graham, I mean, once you take Free Kitty out of this race, if you're against her, they're better than the other horses in here. And if you watch her uh, in the stretch of that race, she was trying to make a move up the rail under Benji Hernandez. And... He just got into trouble. A horse came over on him. She got totally sawed off in the last 16th. She would have been a clear second that day and just got stopped in the last 16th of a mile. So that's by far the best race that she's ever run. She's only a three-year-old heading in the right direction. I just want to take the horse who's in form right now. I, have, I could have very well been, could have tried to make this too simple when I handicapped this race. Karen's Gem, cover photo, and Malamu Mischief have only won restricted races, whether they were two or three lifetime claimers or straight three-year-old races. Whereas 
Free Kitty has won uh, four times. She's won an open race, uh, a starter allowance. And Radiant Rhythms won 11 races. Sometimes for me, it's just that simple. And that's what I did in here. I don't trust Free Kitty. Uh, kind of along the lines of cover photo, Radiant Rhythm is probably going to be three times the price as Free Kitty. And I know she needs to find some form as the source was taken off of George Navarro. Uh, but, you know, the Blickers went on last time. Blickers came right back off. My buddy Mike Tanuzzo has had a good year. He just won a race on Friday. Uh, I, I don't know. I think this horse has a little bit, if you, if you will, of a class edge on these. And I don't, I don't trust the rest of them. I just don't. Look, I mean, I'm not way against her, but I thought Cover Photo was coming out of the same race and ran better than her last time. And her, a lot of her good form, I mean, nothing against her current connections, but a lot of her good form was for Jorge Navarro. It was. I, I always wonder if they could hold together horses coming out of that bar. And we'll see. Her, her race two back was okay. Yeah. I thought this race was the six and the seven, and that was kind of it. But uh, you made some good points about Cover Photo, especially at uh, the fact that she's going to be... 10 to 1 in a 5 horse field, yeah. 8 to 1 in a 5 horse field should be the biggest price. All right. Uh, race number 5, and again, that starts the Empire 6. R late pick 5 starts here. This is the crossroads race of the day. The early pick 4, early pick 5 wrap, late pick 5 begins. Field of 8, 25 2 lifetime claimers going 6. Now, this one we kind of saw similarly. Yeah. I mean, it kind of does boil down to a two-horse race now, especially given the way the track is, because I think that's really going to help the horse you put on top, Dr. Devera's yeah. Way, who's just basically ordinary on a fast track, and he moves way up on when there's moisture in the surface. Saying he's ordinary is nice, being very nice yes, to him on maybe, a fast maybe, track. Maybe yeah. ordinary on sloppy tracks yeah. and, and a little bit less than ordinary on fast tracks. Um, I just put quick entry on top. I mean, Jason Service, he actually did get this horse to improve off the claim. He just kind of chose a pretty tough spot to run him in first off the claim. That started allowance field is just better than what he's facing here. I think the turn back and distance is going to work for him. It's really about these two. I just slightly trusted quick entry a bit more. Yeah, I don't really have much to say other than the, I, I want to use the three and the six. I guess that big number that Bourbon and Rye ran here in the mud, that 79 buyer speed figure on, on New Year's Day, makes him a contender in here. But man, I, I hate betting on horses that you're looking to harken back 11 months earlier to yeah. try to find the right form. You know what I mean? It was a bad field. That yeah. was a muddy harrow track, not a sloppy seal track so that's a little bit different a little different we'll see yeah all right threes and sixes sixes and threes we're on the same page in race number five off the turf in race six six furlongs on the main track for the maidens uh let's take a look at dangerous edge here is dangerous edge the uh he's actually no, he's, yeah, out. he's out never yeah. mind dangerous edge is out i was given bad info I was given bad info. He would have been could, tough in this race. That he would have been really tough in this race. Uh, yes. I'm sorry about that. We apologize. All right. So, all right. This is not a lie. We have a stat. Notorious flirt. The horse I have first. And David has second. Linda Rice. There it is. Second time. Second time. Turf to dirt. Those are better than her overall numbers. They are. She does great with this move, and she especially has success with this move in the winter. I, I didn't boil it down to Aqueduct, but you could. I can only imagine strong. what it was in Aqueduct. Very yeah. strong. Um, the problem with this horse is, and, and I, I agree, Notorious Flirt is pretty interesting here. I've got her second, uh, or him second. It really is a turf pedigree on the damn side. I mean, Caracorm Electra was strictly a turf horse. Her two progeny so far have been turf horses, Electronic being one of them. I know it's a flatter on top, but he's not really a turf influence, so maybe the dirt will come through there. I'm just I'm a little wary of this horse. Yeah, I mean, I'll look, with, between that stat and, you know, everybody knows how well Linda does with the second time stars. This horse is going to take plenty of money. Yeah. This horse is going to take plenty of money. And if you, if My you... other issue is this horse is well meant first time out. Rare for a Linda Rice first-time starter to get bet down to 5-2, to two, especially in a turf race. They thought this horse was going to do well first time out, and it was just a big disappointment. And now they're going to the main track. Maybe, maybe it's going to be her typical move where he's improved second out, mm -hmm. and that's, that's certainly what happens most of the time. I'm just, there are some questions about this horse. I'm surprised you don't have the horse that I put on top anywhere because I think he's really interesting in this race now that it's, it's run on the dirt. Uh, tap his ear, his only two dirt sprints, if you just look at those two races, three and four back, 
they're going to make him really tough in here because he was facing Harris Bay and Dream Bigger. He closed well to be third behind those two horses on September 15th. Before that, he was racing against three Jokers and Silly K, both stakes horses now. His dirt sprints are actually better than his dirt routes, even though they tried to stretch him out and thought he was a horse that wanted to go long. I think this turn back is really going to work for him. Condessa Barn coming out of the doldrums as well. Gary's won four races here at the meet, and Barn's going well. Yeah, you know, this was a kind of race I felt like, unless you were going to do like I did, and lean on Linda. I want to use a little Asmussen first time starter north side, the 13, the son of Into Mischief out of a Grand Slam. Yeah. Yeah, should, should handle a wet track. After that, it was kind of six in one hand, half a dozen in, in the other for me. Uh, so I'm going to look to lean on the two outside numbers here, the 13 and 14, because for me and my bankroll, if I don't, I could use six or seven of them in here. Yeah, I mean, there are some turf horses that stayed in this race that might take money on the, you know, on the first page if you printed out the PPs that I don't really want now. There are horses with big turf pedigrees mm -hmm. that were interesting on the turf. I mean, Northside is interesting. That first-time starter you mentioned, his dams actually have to upstart, uh, so there's pedigree there. I mean, Jack of Clubs is a little bit interesting in, in this sprint race. He was uh, okay turning back last time, but, yeah, I kind of agree with you. I, I want the two horses that I have uh, in first and second. There you go. So 10 Tapazirans for... David and I'm going to try to Linda Rice, the, one of my defaults here in the wintertime at Aqueduct 14, notorious for uh, neither of them will be 12 to 1 or 8 to 1. Remember, morning lines are made for the turf. We're off the turf one more time today. It's in race number seven. Again, cuts back to a flat mile on the main track. El Hermano. He is not scratched. He is running. He is my top pick. And here he is getting back to the main track for the first time in... Well, about seven months last time out, and this was some effort. If he repeats this race, he's going to be pretty tough. Uh, this was a great pick by uh, our friend Andy Serling. It was. When he picked this horse on top, uh, getting 6-1 to one on him. Uh, he's got to step up in class. I will say this was a much weaker field that he's beating up on here. But he earned a speed figure that puts him right in the mix. He's back at the mile today. Uh, his one sloppy track race prior to this was okay. So uh, I think he's the worst to beat. All right, we got one more replay for you. A couple of old pros here on the Naira circuit, Storm, Prophet, and Vincento. Here they are duking it out. Man, this is like Rocky Apollo Creed at this point. How many times have these two faced off in their careers? Yeah, uh, they've been kind of stuck at this condition for a while, moving up, coming back to the brace for the claiming tag a few times. Uh, this is Vincento getting the better of Storm Profit today. And Storm Profit, this is just his MO. He doesn't really win races anymore. Vincento, he does handle wet tracks. Uh, I think he's been against some tougher companies recent starts. He really had no chance against Mr. Buff 2 back. Last time out, he's facing tougher open foes. I think he's back at the right class level here. He's run well for Linda in the past. I just thought Vincento made a lot of sense and had a slight class edge over El Hermano. All right, so you went to Vincento. I went to El Harmano. Shamrock Kid. Sham you know, I would have taken a little bit of a swing with Shamrock Kid in here, but now, last time was the third consecutive start where there's been some issues leaving out of there, yeah. and, Scott you know, Kid. he's facing yeah. some some tough cookies in here. These old hard-knocking New York breads, he can't keep getting away with no. this. And he's running well afterwards, but it, you, you can't uh, be a real contender if you don't get, get away from there sharply against horses yeah. like and this. And he got away with it last time because of the outside post, but it's going to be tough in most other situations. Yeah. Mid-pack now, mm -hmm. right sloppy track. You're yeah. probably going to, you know, if he does this again, he's going to get a lot of kickback. Uh, I respect him, but if he can get out of there, I think things would be a little bit of a different story. All right. David's going to try Vincento. I am going to try El Hermano. The Thunder Rumble division, good old Thunder Rumble, cost me and my dad a lot of money when he beat Dixie Brass and the Jim Dandy at Saratoga mm -hmm. in 92. Uh, but I don't hold it against him. I love Thunder Rumble. This Travers is New York. Right? Yeah, Travers. He won the Jim Dandy and Travers that year. Uh, beat Devil is due. Here is a couple of old pros. He loves to fight in gold for the king. This is back on Empire Showcase Day in the Hudson. I want to show a bit of this race, because watch Gold for the King in particular in those lime green silks towards the back of the pack. Joel Rosario just couldn't get him into the position that he wanted because he broke a little bit slowly, was too far back, behind a slow pace. Uh, he had to steady a few times. You're going to see again right here, he's trying to move up the inside and just doesn't really have anywhere to go. He ends up gluing him to the rail in the stretch. Not that the rail was a bad place to be. It wasn't. But you didn't want to be trying to close up the rail behind some tiring horses. T Loves a Fight, on the other hand, had a great trip. He was up close to a very slow pace, just got run over by Bill DeSutlet, who was much the best here. But I thought T Loves a Fight really had the best of it, and Gold for the King was just never in a position to really be competitive. Gold for the King's better than this. The problem is he's been a short price so many times recently, and he hasn't won since this race last year. He's kind of run out of chances for me. And he's facing 
a much tougher bunch of ho bunch of horses this year than he did in last year's renewal. Uh, yes, definitely. I mean, overall, this group of New York breads is tough. Maybe not the best field that's been no. assembled here, but it's it's better than last year for sure. All right, uh, my boy Tate. We have not seen my boy Tate in a long time since October of last year. We're looking at just about a 13-month layoff. Here is my boy Tate, along with Gold for the King, in the January of 18, say Florida Sandy. I think it's appropriate that we're showing this race because it was over a very similar racetrack mm -hmm. to the one that he's going to encounter here. Uh, he is good enough if he's in form. I mean, if he gets back to top form, he's arguably the horse to beat. It's just Michelle Nevin doesn't have great stats off layoffs. I think we're going to show a stat after this. We are. Um, and, you know, she's brought a lot of horses back off layoffs recently, and it's tough. I mean, it's hard to win these races, especially when this horse is trying to get back uh, to the form that he once had against arguably a tougher field. So I respect his form. I just can't put him on top. I'll use him defensively. All right. You like offers hope on top. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think that he's getting back into a really good spot. He's a little inconsistent, but I think he's had some excuses. He's a horse that really needs to be out in the clear and forwardly placed to have his best chance. That wasn't the case three back when he got outrun at Aqueduct going a mile. And last time out, something happened in that Hawkinson. That was actually a good field down at Delaware. Uh, he's run well at Aqueduct before. I think the seven furlongs is a good distance for him, and I love the post. Drawn outside the other speed. He's got these big figures in, and if he can duplicate it against top company. Yeah. Uh, he's run really well, like you said, and on a wet track in the past as well. That's certainly going to help his cause, you would think, this afternoon. I went to Dark Money, a horse who has not run particularly well on a wet track. Those races did not come for his current barn, Rudy Rodriguez. He's run well in his three starts since Rudy claimed him. 440,000. I'm hoping he can sit the trip off of Binkster and maybe Arthur's Hope and, and, and gets first run on the speed. I'll take a little chance with him. I'm going to use Gold for the King. I'm going to use uh, my boy Tate as well, maybe even a little T loves a fight, who probably won't need to show that speed that he needed to show last time and just make the one run like he's accustomed to this afternoon. I got a text from our friend Mr. Sterling before the show, and he said, you're lucky that he's not on the show today because he'd have a lot to say about dark money in this race. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to step up, but he's, he's run some speed figures that I, I guess could put him in the mix. But I, I prefer the horses that were class horses at this level. Yeah, he could text me. You know, he doesn't have to <laughs> Next year. That's race eight, the Thunder Rumble the division of the New York Stallion Series. We'll wrap it up with Maiden Special Weight competition in the finale. Let's throw the stat up right away. Todd Pletcher has the one Operation Roses. It's a pretty good number. Yeah, and I want to point this out because his numbers across the board with three and up horses just on a variety of circuits and a variety of circumstances are not great, uh, but he does well at Aqueduct in the winter with these types of horses. Uh, we've seen him bring some up from Florida in recent years and do okay, and that's the case with this horse. I think this horse is, is going to be pretty tough in this race. Uh, I don't know a ton about him. I know he was originally with Bill Mott. Now he's with Pletcher. His workout three back on October 28th, if you look it up, it matches um, this Barnes horse, Zenden, and he's a stakes winner from last year that made his first start off a trainer switch to Pletcher a couple weeks ago at Gulfstream Park West or immediately after this workout and he earned a 95 buyer in victory so the fact that he was working with that horse I think is a good sign got a little pedigree uh, I think this horse is probably decent yeah I want to use the one three five uh, maybe a little 12 the five the jokes on you I put on top uh, on paper distorted humor, humor out of an AP and the mayor should like a wet track Horses debut was good. I don't know what happened second time. I guess chasing that pace uh, didn't help his cause. They tried turf. We see a little bit of a break. I'll give him a shot at a middling price at six or seven to one. But yeah, I want to use. I'm definitely using Todd's horse. I'm going to use a little Hot Brown as well. Yeah. Hot Brown's the horse to beat. Baker's got two contenders in here. Hot Brown's run the faster speed figures. I mean. He'll probably win if nobody else steps mm -hmm. forward, but he's going to be a short price. Yep. All right. We'll see if the first can handle Charlie Baker. In the finale, you should handle all of the action today over at Naira Betts. Go over there and get an account if you don't have one. The promo code is Big A. 100% deposit match up to 200 bucks. While you're at Naira Betts, you can play the... Risk-free Sundays at Delmar, 25 to win on a horse in the second race today. If you lose, you will get your 25 bucks back. You got to do it on the app only. That wraps Talking Horses. We're back Wednesday. I'll be with you all day, excluding for this carryover. Empire Six, just 102 bucks shy of 380,000. I'll be in the booth for races four and five today. Thanksgiving weekend. Starts Thursday, 1.9 million on the line, 888-516-NYRA for your Thanksgiving lunch reservations. Johnny I, a reprise of the scratches and changes.